Greetings. Good morning, it's Lucina. Good morning. We can get started with the CI working group meeting in just a few moments, as there may be a few more folks who would like to join. All right, uh, it's 10.05, we can get started. Uh, my name is Lucina Stricko, and I've been doing project management for the CI Working Group and the Cross Cloud CI team. I've posted the meeting agenda and notes for this call into the chat, and also a copy of today's slide presentation has been shared in the chat window as well. I'll pass it over to Taylor if you'd like to introduce yourself, and then we can popcorn, introduce everyone on the call and get started. Thanks, Lucina. Um, yeah, I'm Taylor Carpenter and I um, provide a little bit of development and uh, ops dev on the team and working with Denver. And Denver, are you with us? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, great. I'm going to go ahead and see if... Hey, Taylor, Dan just joined, um, but I'm not sure that uh, who else we have and w what you want to cover. Hello. Hello. Hi, uh, I'm Shashi uh, from Huawei. Uh, this is the first time I'm attending this bar group. And uh, I'm, I just want to get myself updated with this uh, uh, work group, basically. We have a downstream projects who uh, use a CI 
uh, which is uh, more or less based on uh, Kubernetes uh, test infra tools. Uh, so we are looking for some alternatives in that direction. Like I'm, I just want to get updated myself with the CNCF CI working group. Great, welcome. Sure, thanks. Uh, Dan, um, your audio was a little cut out as you came in. I couldn't quite hear everything. If, if um, was there something? No, I was just saying that I'm part? here, but I, I didn't have anything I needed to cover. Okay, no problem. Okay, well, um, let's see. So happy to have um, anyone join that wants to listen. Um, and participate to see what's going on. Also, um, if anyone has something they would like to talk about, a topic uh, specifically, the CI Working Group, there's a shared document with agenda and notes, so feel free to add anything on here, um, maybe even for the next time uh, when we prepare that, and happy to have you join in on that. Otherwise, um, participating on some of the things that we're working on on the cross cloud CI team so I'll jump right into that so the updates uh, from the cross cloud CI team and the project that we're working on so for those of you that hey, are Taylor, new, mm -hmm. just before we dive in could I just ask the Huawei folks because uh, they previously had had a site up cncf build that was sure. based on container ops and I was just curious um, what the status of that was. Absolutely. Uh, I think uh, I don't have much info about that, Dan, as of now. So uh, I'll, I'll uh, get to that probably next time, okay? Okay, if maybe you could send an email to sure. the um, CNCFCI mailing list, I'd, I'd love to hear it. If you guys have either discontinued the project or are taking it in a different direction or anything. Sure, uh, I'll okay. try to do that. Thanks. Awesome. Okay, so um, this is the current uh, team on cross cloud CI um, development, doing development. So, Denver, who some of y'all have um, maybe met previously, Watson has been doing API development and some front end development, Josh Smith. Uh, doing front end dev, and then Lucina and myself, who you've met now. So, this is current team, <clears throat> and the meeting notes I talked about before, those are linked off of the CI Working Group uh, GitHub page. So, since last, um, last meeting, we have had a couple of uh, demos and meetings with some folks. Camille, uh, we went through the current status, hadn't had an update with her in nearly a, a year. It seems like it's been quite a while, so uh, that was good to catch up with her. We're going to be following up um, to get more of her feedback. Lucas, uh, we had a meeting last week talking about Cubeadmin and how ADM, how we could add that in as a potential plugin for doing um, Kubernetes provisioning. We've, the system now has, it uses uh, custom provisioning on all the clouds. So we had some feedback on where KubeADM is right now, what type of support, and then some directions that are going. We also received a bunch of, I guess, more detailed uh, specifications and what we could look into to see if it's going to work right now or if we need to have some further conversations. So that's on our list and then we'll be having some follow-up conversations with Lucas. On the uh, cross-cloud uh, software stack itself from the CI system, the pipeline, um, we've as we've been increasing and moving towards the um, production release um, of the system. We've been working through, it's starting getting really rapid on resource usage. So 
we actually had to reach out to the cloud providers, get a bunch of that increased as we're pushing through all of the different environments and testing um, and seeing that, that'll tie in with some conversations, Dan, uh, with some of the folks um, like for the IBM and uh, Bluemix stuff that you're aware of. Um, Linkerd, uh, there's, as we're refactoring to work with the new system as it was split out, um, fixing some issues on some of the existing projects. Uh, we've had some items for upstream changes like core DNS. Uh, there was, I guess it was right at the end of the last, on the edge of the last meeting, uh, there was a upstream for Kubernetes that was fixed as well. And, and then on packet, there was, there's been limitations with resolving um, resolution on the clusters because a uh, packet doesn't provide any type of uh, DNS service or anything else um, internally. So we have a discovery cluster that uh, works with the deploys and allows um, us to work around some issues with bootstrapping and other things. So that's in place and working. So packet uh, was offline while we put that and it's back re-enabled and, and working as far as a test uh, cloud provider. On the dashboard itself, the uh, part of the 3 a.m. scheduling is um, the a client for triggering and controlling the backend CI system and handling stuff like when is the new Kubernetes master build done and complete and ready to um, provision and then um, run through and collect all the status and stuff. So this is part of that. So the true client for doing all those pieces and and then the next step uh, I'll get to in a, a minute on the 3M. Integration tests, we've been doing a lot of integration tests across the whole system. So both this is going from dashboard all the way down uh, through the CI system and completed quite a few of those. And then as we're moving towards production D1O, there was um, a lot of bug fixes that we we're working on. Um, a lot of them are related to integration stuff like timeouts. So one of the items that we ran into was um, with when you're doing a lot of deploys uh, app deploys and then running tests on top of each other and the the state of the dashboard so working through those sort of things um, and this is really going to be affected more when we start increasing the number of times the dashboard is updated but seeing this and let's see so then we get to in progress affluent d is um, was a little bit higher on the priority list previously. It's been lower, but it was um, partially done uh, last year. The builds were working, so the remaining items, uh, there's a, a couple of remaining items to test, but the big thing was refactoring it to support the new app deploys. Um, that's been completed and it's ready to test, uh, so we'll be finishing that out and it'll be coming in the next um, couple of weeks or so. The the last, some of the last items for V1.0 are the running the scheduled job. This is what runs at 3 a.m. And every day to do builds for all the active projects, do provisioning um, to all of the active clouds with the latest um, stable and head of Kubernetes. So we'll be, this will be using the new trigger client and stepping through and running for each of the pieces. And then one thing that we need to update and work on is the related to all this will be clearing out all the resources. So after the 3M job, with all the work that we've done, there's quite a few pieces that we need to um, tie in to actually run and clear out those. <clears throat> Some of this ties in with development, how long do we want something up and available, and and then which ones do we want to be cleared out immediately. So that'll be probably post-launch um, as far as V1.0 to complete that, so pretty soon after. 
And let's see. I think that's it. And then what's next? So the V1 release, and we're looking at um, completing this, these items targeting this week. So it's going to be uh, this by end of week. I think we're going to be pretty comfortable with a launch. Um, want to talk with you, Dan, as well to see how we want to do that and any items that you want to make sure are in there. And this is going to include a release 2.1.0 of the CI system. So this has a lot of the parts that are allow us to do integration with other groups like ONAP uh, for the build system itself. And it's working internally, so it'll be public on that. And then we can start working with other folks to take advantage of those parts. The backend API system integrated to that, and then um, the projects and clouds that we're planning to have for that launch. So coming in the future, so we have, um, we're gonna, we're planning on being at KubeCon, and we have an intro that we are would like to do that's pretty close to what we've done in the past. Uh, a little bit of updates with what's the production launch. The deep dive, we're hoping to focus more on working with with projects as far as integration and and then start getting feedback. So actually, I have a live uh, working session for that. So getting ready for that. We'll be updating all the documentation across all the different um, repos to be able to help people to just step in and, and start how would they add their project? How could they contribute? So there's going to be a lot of that just after release. <clears throat> and and then the next big focus is going to be ONAP, supporting a some of the components, the master service orchestrator. Um, we're planning on targeting that component and getting it running on all the active clouds and doing the integration with them. We have a couple of clouds. Um, Bluemix should be coming online. And then OpenStack is pretty close um, based on work that we've done with folks on that end. So that should be pretty soon after. And then we got quite a few demos um, and discussions that we want to have. So. The GitOps side, we've done some review on that. We're trying to uh, write something up on how we're actually already using some of the uh, processes and, and ideas that um, are being talked about from GitOps. And we'd love to talk more um, about that. And then it would be nice to get a, I think one of the requests is uh, to have someone from that end talk as well. So let's see. We have quite a few other demos we need to catch up with on the storage working group. The packet plus arm was deferred, so try to follow back up with Ed and see if he's available yet. And then, as I mentioned, OpenStack will be following back up with Chris Hodge once we um, retarget integrating the code that he wrote. So he wrote most of the OpenStack uh, provisioning code, and, and essentially we need to update it and pull it into the new release, and then we'll follow up with him. Why do we need to update the code? I thought that he would update the OpenStack code after we release the 2.0. Um, he could. I think most of it was pretty close, and so we were going to go through and see. I think it would be if, if there's a um, anything major, then maybe we push that back to him. It could be pretty minor. We merged his code into um, a branch that was pretty close to the current. So Denver and I were going to dig through that and see if it's pretty short to update and then deploy. If it is, then we'll do it. If not, then we'll push back to Chris and allow him to retarget. <clears throat> so.
So um, some upcoming events that we're planning on attending in some fashion or other, the Mobile World, Con uh, Mobile World Congress and helping with an app, as you know, Dan, uh, cross community infrastructure, the, this face-to-face -face for CICD and ONS, North America, and then KubeCon, which we were talking about before. Any questions, other questions? So I, I don't quite understand when you think the dashboard is gonna be live. I think that we should be through um, getting all the, I guess, the production bug fixes and everything else that we've been working on the last couple of weeks this week. So I think we'll be up and ready by end of week as far as those parts and probably want to check in and it'll, we'll have it running at 3 a.m. Like actually by tomorrow we'll be running, going through and seeing what What's the results? What's the results? Um, okay, I'm very eager to see that. Pretty close. So. Awesome. Okay, well, if there's nothing else, and um, if anyone have any other items they want to talk about outside of what we had here? Cool. So the next um, working group meeting is February 13th. And this is where you can get involved as far as the cross-cloud CI or the CI working group. There's a CNCF CI public list, um, GitHub uh, CNCF CI working group has information as well. And this slide deck uh, was shared in the channel. And we'll add those to the, the notes as well. Thanks everyone. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. See you all next time. Thank you. See you all.